Hello, this is David Birch at Star Path School of Navigation in Seattle, and I would like to present a short video on the use of the memory map e chart program that we use in our inland and coastal navigation course. Um, this would be just an introduction to the basic parts, and uh, we'll also cover later in this series other e chart programs. So to get started, when you install the StarPath program, you will get an icon like this on your desktop. And when you push that button, this window shows up. And this gives you the instructions for the overall course. We will come back to that. These are the various ebooks that come with the tech with the course as well as the printed books. But for now, we are going to just look at an introduction to the use of these e-charts. When you install the course materials that got you that icon, you will get uh, these charts will all be stored on the, your hard drive in the right spot. And um, you will then be able to just click these charts to run, but you will have to install the chart, the chart uh, viewer as explained uh, in these notes that comes, let's see, here's where the charts are going. You don't actually even have to know that. And uh, that will take care of that for you automatically. So we've done that, we've installed the reader, and then just you can click one of these charts and that'll open memory map with uh, one of the charts showing like that. That's what, that's the main chart we use, eastern end of the Strait of Juan de Fuca. So let's just look at a few points about that. Here I am, it's also using a mouse. I'm actually running this in a Mac on a simulator of a PC, which shows that that's doable. And uh, it's best done with a mouse, with a roller bar. So even if you're using a Mac, you may find it helpful to use a standard uh, PC mouse that has a roller bar. So as I roll the mouse forward, it changes the scale in and out like that. And if I left click and drag, it moves the charts about like that. So you could roll it in, say you want to look at this area here, and then just uh, roll it back out to get that detail. So that would be a, a first point in the use of those charts. If you wanted to see where the charts are, you could click this button here. And then these are the training charts uh, that are installed with the course. There's actually more than that. I've erased a couple, but we'll come back to that. These are the ones we're using for now. Another session we'll talk about loading charts, where to get them, and things like that. There's several types of charts. Now, but first, let's just look at some basics. Uh, let's say, for example, you want to know the distance between this point and this point. In this program, it's done with a, with a route tool. Other, other chart programs have different ways, but this one you just set up a single route, one-legged route, and I click that button, then I click here, and then draw it over to here. And that's it. Now, you see it's still carrying on like that, so if I want to end it, I just hit Escape, like that. And so there's the distance, but you see I'm not seeing anything about it. I just have it here. So it's an important button is this one right here, Read Out at Cursor. Then if you click that, you see there's the route. It doesn't have a name or anything yet, it, but you see it's 5.2 nautical miles long and direction 238 magnetic. Now, that brings up two more points. For example, if I go to mode, units, nautical. So I am set to nautical miles. The magnetic variation is here. And you, if you put this zero, the variation zero, then it's going to read true. If you read, if you put in what the local variation is, then you get magnetic, uh, presuming this button is pushed here. For our chart throughout the course, since we use different parts of this chart with slightly different variations, and we also use different versions of the chart, we always use 20 degrees east as the standard. So these are going to read out in magnetic. The other thing to note here in the 
Uh, let's see. Also, yeah, nautical miles. Be sure to check that. I think the default on the program is statute. Then position format, we want to use latitude, longitude in degrees and minutes. That's the most convenient, although for other applications you may want to use something different. So that's that. But now let's look again. Let me just, okay, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to right click this, right click it, and then delete it. Let's just do that again now from here. Do it, oh, I got to do a route. So I'm going up here. Then I'm coming down here to where I want to start and maybe and then just now you see as since I have this button pushed it now tells me uh, what, what I'm doing as I do it so far that's often handy then I hit escape to end it that's that now uh, if you just wanted to make a waypoint you could this is a waypoint or new mark they call it so I can just go here anywhere and drop a waypoint in right click it go to the properties left click it and I can give it a name uh, could be anything do da and then I can lock it so it doesn't move and I make it visible and also by the way here is the actual coordinates of it that turns out to be useful as I'll show in a moment now it's locked I'll unlock it for now and oh, I want to show the name. So you see this name shows up here like that. And then that's that. So that's a mark. So I didn't lock it so I could, I could uh, delete it. If I, if I did lock it, I would have to unlock it before I could do anything to it. So those are those basics. Now let's just look at one other. Let's go out a little bigger. No, in. I'm rolling the mouse in here. And let's just say I want to make a route that I'm somewhere here and then I'm just going to go around this island, around this point, and around this point, and then over to here. So the way to do that probably the best is just take your route and maybe even on this big view just rough it in, okay? Put that point, that point, that point, that point, maybe here. Uh, here, here, and here, something like that. Then again, escape. That's done. But now I need to do better than that. So I want to zoom in and really fine tune those those points. So maybe I might like to go, you know, just so I have a reference mark here. I might come in a little closer to this buoy, right, like that. So I just micro tweak that one in a little bit left click and drag I want to see the end of that island up there so I'm gonna go a little closer to it and likewise there's another buoy here but uh, I may be a little bit too close there so I may just want to come in here and add a point so I can right click insert a waypoint just pull us off there a little bit for example come up to that buoy let's call that okay this it doesn't seem I need at all, so I'm just going to right click and delete that waypoint. Where do I get it? Delete, delete the waypoint. Yes. So now I'm coming straight up here. I'll come a little closer to that buoy. That's coming in here. Let me roll the mouse a little bit to come out. Actually, I don't need that point either. But let's just, I could do it this way. Let's just say I'm going in here, and then I'll just drag this point down to here. And let's say that's my route. So there's a route set up very easily. Now it's popped up this display of these properties, but we'll just hide that. So there's my route. It's got X number of legs. The first one is, well, we could give it a name uh, into, let's go, uh, let's just give it properties, properties. And we'll give it a name uh, to Port Angeles or you know, gee, something like that. So that's visible. Let's lock the whole route so we don't tweak it away. And then here are the different waypoints that we had in it. Now, one of the things that will be found, whoops, I don't, what did I do there? Let me just get rid of that. I don't click some button I didn't want. Something that you'll find very useful is to go in, I'm not going to do it now, but each of these waypoints really should be named. You'll have, they'll each have a number that's given to them automatically. But let's just, but you, I would go in and name each one of these. So give it a waypoint, pro, not a route, waypoint properties. 
and just call that like, well, it's still number two. So you could call it two a uh, violet point, violet point, and so on. It's locked, and then that's that. So that one has a name. Oh, I must not have showed uh, properties, waypoint properties. I want to show the name, show the name. OK, done, et cetera. So that's violet point. Likewise, go in and name all of these. Uh, name all of these points it makes it better so that's a route and one of the uh, nice features of let's see if I can figure out remember how to do it if I overlay um, map I want what's called uh, import search mode map let me come back to properties. Um, now I'm going to route. I click the route, so it's route properties. Here's what I want, route card. So click, click that button. And then and what it does is it makes you this very nice picture of the route, which you can print out. See, you see having the names, see having the names here along here makes it easier for a lot of different reasons. So then you have this very nice picture of this route that you could actually print out and have a hard copy of to save uh, just in just in case it's needed. Uh, where am I now? How do I get out of the route card? Oh, that opened up in a browser. That opened up in a web browser, and then you just can print that. So uh, that's the uh, first uh, first lesson here with the memory map program and um, I'll stop there for now.